So today we're gonna to be talking about choosing the right asset protection trust, whether you should look at a domestic US asset protection trust or a foreign asset protection trust for estate planning, succession planning, asset protection, privacy, and tax benefits. There's a lot of great jurisdictions out there to set up an APT, APT short for asset protection trust. It's only natural that one of the questions I get a lot is whether it's better to set up an APT in the US or in another known trust and foundation planning jurisdiction like Dubai, Jersey, Guernsey, or the Cayman Islands? The answer to this question, like so many things in this field, is it really depends on many factors, including whether or not you're a U.S. person. So we're gonna go through this. We're gonna talk about domestic and foreign APTs for both U.S. persons and non-U.S. persons. So first, we're gonna talk about the advantages of domestic APTs for U.S. persons. One of the first obvious things is a more predictable legal environment. U.S. persons are gonna be more familiar with the U.S. legal system. And so a lot of times having a domestic APT is more comfortable for them. It's also often more convenient, right? Because you're dealing in an environment that you know, you have access to your banks and other services that you're familiar with. There's also generally less compliance in the U.S. This is because the U.S. generally requires less compliance. They usually have less compliance regulations than a lot of foreign jurisdictions do with regard to APTs. It can often be more cost effective than foreign APTs because they're just cheaper to set up. You can have more privacy. So in the U.S., trust documents are private documents. The only people that really know they exist are the settler, the person setting up the trust, and their attorney, the one who wrote it, and then whoever else they share it with, but they're not registered anywhere. Whereas in many foreign jurisdictions, there's trust registers and beneficial owner registers with regard to trust. So the information of, about the trust and, and who the settler is, the beneficiaries and trustees is gonna be available to some government agency. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, Subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. The other advantages is a potential savings on estate tax, right? So generally, once you transfer your assets to an APT, there's gonna be a gift tax when you transfer those assets in. They can appreciate and there's not gonna be any additional estate tax when you die. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of a domestic APT for U.S. persons. So the main disadvantage for a U.S. person with a domestic APT is it's less asset protection, right? You have the trust and usually a lot of its assets based in the U.S. where U.S. courts have jurisdiction and they're going to make things up as they go along to try to get the result that they want, which is usually against the interests of the settler. So you do generally get a little bit less asset protection with the domestic APT there's also greater tax exposure. So like I said, there may be gift tax when you place the assets in the trust. You do have the benefit that those assets can appreciate within the trust and there's no additional estate tax or gift tax when it goes to the beneficiaries. But U.S. trusts are subject to compressed tax rates, meaning you hit that 37% tax rate at a relatively low income threshold. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of domestic APTs for U.S. persons. Next, we're gonna talk about foreign APTs for U.S. persons. So the main advantage of a foreign APT for a U.S. person is more asset protection, right? So if you have a foreign trust and that foreign trust owns foreign assets, so let's say, for example, the foreign trust has a large portfolio that's held in a non-US bank, you're gonna have the trust and its assets outside the jurisdiction of US courts, which is gonna give you more asset protection. Also, a lot of foreign jurisdictions that specialize in foreign asset protection trusts have very strong asset protection laws, make them very difficult to pierce. You potentially have less tax exposure. So normally, if you have an APT that's a foreign APT that's set up by a US person, that US person is gonna to continue to be liable for the income taxes on the income generated by the trust, but you're not going to have any additional trust tax in that foreign jurisdiction because generally in these jurisdictions that we're talking about, there is no tax that trusts are subject to. Uh, also, a lot of foreign jurisdictions have very flexible APT laws that can be more flexible than U.S. APT law. So those are the advantages of foreign APTs for U.S. persons. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of foreign APTs for US persons. So the first disadvantage 
is a less predictable legal environment, right? You now have your trust in a jurisdiction that you probably don't know a ton about, you don't know their legal system, and so that gives a little bit of unpredictability and unfamiliarity, which often makes US people feel a little bit uncomfortable. It can also be less convenient, right? You have your trust potentially managed by a foreign trustee, they're in a different time zone, they have a different way of operating, your assets are held in a foreign bank, so it can be less inconvenient. Like I said, they can also have less privacy though than domestic APTs because a lot of foreign jurisdictions have trust registers where you have to register the existence of the trust. They can also have foreign beneficial owner registers where the settler, the trustee, and the beneficiaries are all registered so that information isn't as private. Now usually those registers are only for the government but still somebody has that information whereas in the U.S. that's going to be completely private information. You also have U.S. persons have substantial tax compliance obligations with regard to foreign trust. So there's a lot of filings that need to be done, including Form 3520, 3520A, and potentially uh, Form 8938 and an FBAR. Like I said, the U.S. taxes, usually if you have a, a foreign APT that's set up by a U.S. person, it's going to also have U.S. beneficiaries, which causes U.S. settler, the person who transferred the assets into the trust, to continue to be liable for the income generated by those assets that they put in the trust, which is generally not the case with a domestic APT, where once you pay a gift tax putting those assets into the trust, and then those are the trust assets, the trust is liable for the tax. And like I said, you can also have significant compliance obligations with regard to the foreign trust in the foreign jurisdiction because they're usually very highly regulated and there's a lot of anti-money laundering and know your customer rules and stuff like that that need to be complied with, which are much less in the United States. So now we're gonna talk about using a domestic US APT set up by a foreign person. So first we're gonna talk about the advantages of a US APT for foreign persons. So one of the first advantages is a more predictable legal environment. The US has a well-established, reliable legal system, and most foreigners feel comfortable with the US's legal system, and so that's a huge advantage. They can also be more convenient, even for a foreigner, because it's often a lot easier to do banking and stuff like that in the United States than it is in foreign countries. Again, the US generally has less compliance obligations than a lot of foreign trust and foundation planning jurisdictions, generally cheaper than foreign trusts and foundations, and they offer more privacy, again, because the trust documents are private in the United States where a lot of these foreign jurisdictions now have trust registers and registers of beneficial owners with regards to trust. And if you set up the U.S. trust properly, domestic asset protection trust in the U.S. set up by the foreign person is gonna be treated as a foreign trust for U.S. tax purposes and not subject to any U.S. taxes unless that trust has U.S. source income. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of a U.S. domestic APT for foreign persons. There is potentially greater legal exposure. So U.S. courts have a tendency to be very creditor friendly and reach a decision that they think is just rather than what really follows the law. So a lot of times you're going to get more asset protection in a foreign jurisdiction than you would in the United States. You do potentially have greater U.S. tax exposure if the trust isn't set up properly and it's set up as a, a taxable U.S. trust. You, you need a knowledgeable tax professional to make sure the trust document is drafted to be treated like a foreign trust for U.S tax purposes so you can avoid that. You also may have an FBAR filing requirement. So even if you have a domestic US APT that was set up by a foreigner and properly drafted to be treated as a foreign trust for US tax purposes, it is still a US person for FBAR purposes. So the US trust, even though it's set up by a foreigner, may not have any US beneficiaries or anything like that, it may still be required to file an FBAR for any foreign accounts that the trust holds directly or indirectly. So now, finally, we're going to talk about the advantages of non-US APTs for foreign persons. So the first advantage, much like foreign APTs for US persons is more asset protection, right? So most foreign trust and foundation jurisdictions make a living by offering high asset protection, right? So usually you're gonna get more asset protection, whether you're American or not, from a non-US trust. It's also possible that the foreign jurisdictions trust laws are more flexible in terms of estate planning and stuff like that than domestic APTs. You also may have greater privacy with a foreign trust because it's not gonna have that FBAR filing requirement However, you do need to make sure if you want maximum privacy that you're choosing a foreign jurisdiction then that doesn't have a trust register or a beneficial owner register with regard to trust. Uh, potentially less legal exposure. So like I said before, a 
lot of foreign jurisdictions make a living off of foreign asset protection trusts. So the courts are generally much more trust friendly rather than creditor friendly. And of course, less tax exposure because you're not dealing with the US tax system. So often foreign APT foreigners is going to offer more advantages than a domestic APT, but not always. You have to weigh the, the benefits and the advantages and disadvantages and see which is best. Now we're gonna talk about the disadvantages of non-US APTs set up by foreigners. So like I said before, foreigners are generally pretty comfortable with the US's legal system. So if you're dealing with a legal system in one of these trust or foundation planning jurisdictions, you might have a less predictable legal environment, mainly because the foreigner is not gonna be as familiar with that system or as confident as that system as they might be in the US. Could also be less convenient due to time zone differences, the way the trust is administered and all that stuff, the regulations that need to be complied with. And, and again, going back to compliance, a lot of foreign jurisdictions have very high compliance obligations, which makes it very administ administratively burdensome to administer foreign trusts, regardless if they were set up by a US person or a non-US person. In summary, for US persons, domestic APTs are less costly and easy to, easier to administer but have less asset protection. For foreign persons, US trusts are a good option because they are less costly and easier to administer, but you are subject to US laws, including file an FBAR, which many foreigners don't want to do. If you're interested in setting up an APT, we can help. We have extensive experience helping clients set up APTs all over the world, including determining the best jurisdiction for their particular situation. Also, to learn more about trusts and foundations, download our trusts and foundations guide. I'll put a link down in the description. Thank you.